and the pharaohs, as you know, a lot of them were extraterrestrials. All right, so the real trinity, these three Jesuses, of which one of them was the son of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Also um, goes into crop circles. So for anyone that wants to know more about crop circles. Another classic, classic book that you need to have in your library um, by Dr. Malachi Z. York, Parnababianun. This is Kor, Ancient Egypt and the Pharaohs. And you know, this book was out again in the 90s. Yep. Um, deciphering and breaking down everything to do with Egypt and the pharaohs. And to this day, as you know, many people are still trying to decipher what the pyramids were built mm -hmm. for, what they were used for, who built them, how did they lift those massive stones, etc., etc. And, you know, he taught us back then that you see the pyramids, you see them from the top, but they go deep down into the ground as well. They're like, if you look at a diamond shape, as above, so below. Mm. And they were used for many, many things. In fact, they didn't look like how they look today. Um, and, you know, they were used for extraterrestrials to charge their craft because of the tachyon energy that they emit. They were used for mystery schools mm -hmm. where many people were going to be initiated and taught certain sciences. They were used for so many different things. And this book goes into a lot of that. And the pharaohs, as you know, a lot of them were extraterrestrials. You know, mm -hmm. this is why you look at um, Ankh Aten, for example, or it's really Ankh Aton Amun. Um, you know, you look at his head shape, his body shape. Nefertiti, you know, mm. these are extraterrestrials where they've looked at their, you know, they've found certain skeletons and skulls and things like that that actually explain and go into, you know, the, who they were, where they came from. So this book is very, very um, important. You can see some of the, um, the images like of Osiris and certain people, their colors green because, you know, we, are their descendants, but we have started to rust. So when we're mm. brown today, it's because of the loss of the magnesium, mm -hmm. and um, that's the oxidized, oxidation, how do you say the word? Oxidization. Oxidization, thank you, um, of us, just like losing that chlorophyll that plants have where you see them being green. But this book, it talks about all the ancient, you know, um, pharaohs, um, Imhotep talks about Zosa. Zosa. It basically goes through the various pharaohs and their life and times and how they lived. Um, what else do you, you, you find ah, interesting? The changing of the images in Egypt. The Europeans going over there and covering up the images, trying to make them look like themselves. Mm -hmm. Even though we know Egypt is in Africa, you have people with the audacity going into Egypt and trying to make them look like them. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah, e even like the pharaohs, if you see how we dress with our, what we call the tarbush, the crowns, um, you can see on the mm. walls of Egypt, you see a lot of them wore the same headdress. And that's very important. Um, it represents 360 degrees of physical information and 360 degrees of spiritual. spiritual information. So you have two rings, one at the bottom, one at the top, and then you connect the two. This is how you get this. 360, 360, 720 degrees. That's what we're trying to attain in your dome because your mind, the mental, is the most important aspect of you because it connects you to the lower realms that's the physical realm, the spiritual mm. realm, uh, the soul, and then obviously the higher realms above the mental going on to nine ether. And so the middle path is the mental where you can connect to both above and below, um, which relates, as I said, to the pyramids. Um, but yeah, this is t touches on a lot of the ancient sites. Um, Olmec heads. Found in South America. Yeah. 
there's so many pharaohs that are broken down in here. Talks about Nimrod, um, you know, Sargon, and how, you know, in ancient times, with the Tower of Babel, um, yeah, you talk about Khufu. Khufu was the being that relaxed the immigration mm. laws and allowed, you know, like the Phoenicians and Europeans and certain people to come into Egypt and, um, you know, then they ended up ruling for a specific period of time, a small part of Egypt when, you know, they talk about the Hyksos dynasty, Hyksos or the Hika Hasut, um, which is what, you know, you get burnt faces um, because they got burnt as they came into Egypt. And this is where the word Egypt comes from, because Egypt comes from Aegyptos, mm. which literally means burnt, face. burnt faces or black, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it talks about Thotmus. Oh, yeah. You get, you got <laughs> Thotmus the first. Um, so this is where the biblical characters come from. So when you're saying Thotmus, you're saying Mosi. The, the, the mm. um, last part of that word, M-O-S-E, is where you got Moses from and it became Moshe or Mose, you know, and um, but it's really Thotmus. That's where you get the word Tahuti as well, Tahutimus, because Moses was a student of Tahuti. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is why we say you can find the fossils, um, the bones of these, you know, these pharaohs, but yet you can't find the equivalent in religion, mm. you know, so we know that, you know, Thotmus is really where they get Moses from. Talks about Ankhenaten, you know. Um, it goes also into the, um, the purpose of the open mouth ceremony. Mm -hmm. So we know the shafts lead to um, the Sirius and Orion star constellation. As, we, as you know, in our doctrine, we, um, the Master has explained that the male came from Sirius and the female came from Orion. I realised when I said that. <laughs> I was trying not to cut you. But. Yeah, my mistake. The, the <laughs> male came from Orion and the female came from Sirius Star Constellation. That's right, that's right. Yeah, this is a very interesting book. Talks about Cleopatra. You know, you know Cleopatra is an Egyptian, right? And Mark Antony and her had a child who, you know, people know in the Bible as Cleophas. Mm -hmm. And um, this is where the three different stories of Jesus are put together into one story. Um, in fact, I'm going to show you something. Just, all right, so the real Trinity mm -hmm. is actually dealing with these three Jesuses, of which one of them was um, the son of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Cleopatra plays a very significant role. And don't, don't fall for that Elizabeth Taylor playing Cleopatra mm. in the movies because <laughs> this is what they do to try and um, Europeanize the ancient Egyptians. But yeah, she um, was trying to save Egypt and that was one of the mm. ways she did it by basically getting involved with Mark Antony and they had this son called Cleophus. Um, in fact, you can see it there. That's both Cleopatra, Mark Antony, and their son Cleophus. All right, so that goes into their story and what took place. Okay, um, there's so much in this scroll, um, but we think you need to try and get hold of it um, yourself and read it so that um, you can get the full benefits. It talks about Hara, um, you know, the story of Isis, um, Osiris. And, and Horus, you know, the whole story of how um, Seth betrayed his brother, Osiris, mm -hmm. and got him chopped up into 14 pieces, and then how, you know, um, Ashtat or Isis went about to find the different pieces and found the phallus and was able to basically have a child. Um, a lot of it's symbology, a lot of it's actually dealing with, you know, science of what they call um, IV, IVF, you know, but that was back then. 
Yeah, um, very good scroll. Also um, goes into crop circles. Mm -hmm. So for anyone that wants to know more about crop circles, oh yeah, is a good you, scroll to have. Did we cover that in the um, yeah oh. the, the, the the crop circle that was at the front of the book? That which one here? Is. Yeah, so that the crop circle that um, we're going to show you is something that was actually found in Yorkshire in England. Um, where extraterrestrials actually, um, yeah, there you go. And there are fake um, crop circles, but they're real ones as well. That one's a real one, and it was actually found, you can Google this, in Yorkshire, mm. and it represents the science of the tetrahedron, um, which is dealing with magnetism, you know, where you have something in the middle, and then you have, you know, mm. um, magnets kind of holding that thing in the middle but it goes into a lot um but that that was actually found in yorkshire in england and how you know is the mathematics when you break down the actual geometric shapes mm. that that um, crop circle forms just like when people try and break down the you know the pyramids and how they align with the orion star constellation like um so you do get people who try to make fake crop circles but when you look at it it's easily de um, deciphered whereas when they're actually extraterrestrials in, or in origin it's harder to decipher and a lot of the times these were landmarks for crafts and other aerial views for, for people to know like where certain schools were you know so um, extraterrestrial coming here will be able to look at like a star map, it's like a map really mm. to show you locations of things. Yeah, this is a very, very interesting scroll. Um, Goes into the Dogon tribe as well, and the beings called the Nomos from um, Sirius Star Constellation. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, anything about the Dogon tribe and the Nomos? This is the scroll. Yep, it goes through the different, different types of pharaohs in ancient times, including the females as well, mm. you know. So get hold of that. The link's going to be in the comment section. Um, and then once you've digested it, read it, and then come on the next series of Ask Us Anything, and we'll be able to address your questions. So this is what we do. You read the books, you have questions, mm. you ask us, we clarify, and we keep it going. And we have a thousand books to get through, so... We're going to be quick, all right? Read it more than once, though. Or was it must be said at least seven times? Yeah. Yeah. Let's explain that. The yeah. reason you need to read a book more than once is because most people only retain like 10% of information when they read a book. Mm. So if you read it like seven times, you're going to have 70% of the mm. information, <laughs> you see, because every time you read it, you're going to retain another 10%. You know, and this is scientific fact, so it is good to read books over and over again. That's how it sticks, because repetition is key. It's just like memorising a song, you know, when the first time you mm. hear it, you're going to pick up certain words. The more you, you hear, listen to it. You're going to pick same, up more. Yeah, yeah. Same, same method. Absolutely. So until the next one, peace. Wadu. Wadu. Wow.